everybody, welcome to this TikTok live. Um, please do subscribe and then you get a badge and then I'm really cool once you, uh, once anybody does that ever. Um, so today what I'm going to talk about is empathic ruptures, but specifically the fact that when a woman, so I work with a lot of uh, men and women together in couples, and if women stop liking sex, the man considers this to be an empathic rupture. But instead, he says something stupid. He says this is a bait and switch. As soon as you say bait and switch, it's game over because it's not a bait and switch because the man is like, it's not, it's not his fault, but I'm going to help you understand why what you're saying is, is not smart and it's not even accurate. So when a guy says that when a woman stops liking sex, that's a bait and switch, that's not a bait and switch. Her libido goes down in monogamy. She didn't know that was going to happen unless she was married before. And if she was married before and it ended, she probably attributed the lack of libido to that guy. And you're so much better than that guy. And so then she thinks it's going to be different with you. Women do not understand, just like men don't understand, the biological conditions where within monogamy and with age and over time, women's libido just goes down to the point that she doesn't even recognize it. So men are saying the the wrong thing because they're as uneducated as women on this topic and they say you uh bait and switched me you were a bait and switch you wanted me so you said that you liked sex and then you never intended to keep on going down on me or having sex with me or whatever the case may be this isn't right and it's not true all it's gonna do is make her defensive because you're, it's not accurate. It's totally not true. Women do not expect their libido to go down. They don't expect it in monogamy. They don't expect it with menopause unless they've done some reading up and have older friends and stuff. They they don't expect it when they're nursing. They just don't expect it. They don't expect it if it happens in pregnancy or the week before their period because nobody talks about sex in this country or possibly ever anywhere, I don't know, in this society. So it's not her fault. She doesn't know shit about it. It's not your fault. You don't know shit about it. But you got to stop saying that it's an empathic um sorry you do wait that was spoiler <laughs> you got to stop saying it's a bait and switch because it was not intentional however what it is it's, it's an empathic rupture and if you've never heard that term then you've not been on my side or listened to my podcast um, and I'm not the first to create this term either. It's a term that means when somebody isn't there for you, when there is a breach or a break in the relationship because you can't trust the person because they're not there for you. What's a classic example is when the woman um, has an empathic rupture because the man does not stay overnight in the hospital when the baby's born. I always use this one because everybody can understand it. So the man didn't know he was supposed to stay in the hospital. Nowadays, men do. I'm talking like um, at least 10 years ago or um or or more right so the guy thinks everything's cool she's in the hospital she's got the baby they got the staff i'm gonna go home and get some sleep and if a woman is not good at asserting herself she doesn't say oh my god what are you talking about you're supposed to stay with me and instead she says okay bye and hopes that he comes back and he doesn't come back and then and then you know next week or in 10 years she's like that was a horrible thing that you did to me right empathic rupture and most men can understand it they're like well why didn't you tell me at the time but they can still understand what it means to have um to do something that somebody finds very upsetting and like they don't know even know who you are because what you did is so different than what they expected does that sound like anything? What that sounds like is the same exact thing that happens when a woman stops understanding that the guy values intimacy. Not when she stops feeling desire. She's not in charge of stopping feeling desire. That's what happens. But what happens um, when she stops feeling desire and she doesn't understand that this is still important to the man is an empathic rupture. He feels like totally destabilized. He feels like it was completely understood that they both valued sex and that this was super important, at least to him. And he thought to her, but he thought it was obvious that sex was at least really important to him, like that she definitely knew that. And then all of a sudden, it seems like when her desire dissipates, she forgot. It's like she doesn't even know who he is. And then he doesn't even know who she is. That's a classic empathic rupture, right? 
she feels like her desire went away. It's really very hard to kind of stay uh, present with somebody who's sexual when you're not feeling it at all. So it's like when have you ever gone out with your friends that are sober or, or sorry that are drunk when you're sober? It's like uh, what the hell are y'all doing? Like you look stupid. Like I'm not into this. Can we leave? You know, like that's how you feel. You know, and so it's very similar for a woman to be faced with her uh, husband's desire when she feels zero desire of her own right but it and and this does not happen because like of the woman's fault or anything the man usually does not articulate this well because he doesn't know what's going on he frames it in terms of desire if she feels desire and i feel desire everything is good what happened wouldn't she know that this would happen etc etc a, she doesn't know what would happen. I told you that already. I mean, you got to believe me. <laughs> I'm a woman. I work with all women. Not all women. I work with couples involving women and many individuals. But anyway, what the empathic rupture is that you want to articulate to your wife is this was an empathic rupture. I felt it may not have been articulated, but I felt like we both understood that sex was primary. This was my love language. This was a way that I give love. This is the primary reason I got married, quite honestly. You know, and many men have not articulated it like that even to themselves. But if you think about it, and if you go back, most young men that are single do not have good sex lives. You know, like it's nice to kind of assume that, but the statistics actually show that single men have sex less often than married men so when you're a single guy and you're dating around unless you're like super cool you know um it's not that easy to get women into bed and so if you're a high libido person then you are hoping that when you get married that's going to be a, a big part of your sex life and to you it may go without saying but to the woman it doesn't go without saying because she doesn't understand that and she was having sex because her desire was high and when her desire goes down she's just not anymore and so it, you got to articulate yourself much much more clearly and couples counseling can really help with this you got to articulate yourself a lot more clearly you have to say this is an empathic rupture i didn't verbalize it like this because i was a 20 something year old guy i didn't know how to verbalize shit right but sex and sex with you in particular that I find so attractive was like a primary reason I wanted to get married. As much as having a baby was for you, having sex every day or close to it was for me. And like that was something I thought went without saying because of how high your desire was at the beginning. And so when you turned to me and you were like, oh, now we're kind of done with that implicitly or explicitly. Now we've moved on in our lives and we don't do that even close to every night like we used to, then... That was a massive empathic rupture for me, something that causes me a lot of sadness and grief, the same as it would be for you if I turned around and I said, you know what, like, I don't want these kids, you know, like, I, I, I decide against it, we tried it out, one of them's three, one of them's four, I don't really want them, you know, so, like, either we, like, maybe, like, does your sister want them? As much as she would think that that was insane and crazy and sociopathic is how men feel when the woman is like, you know what, we're just, we're just kind of done with sex. Like, you know, that was then, this is now, and I don't feel any desire. So thus, because it's hard for people to imagine what they're not feeling is true for the other person, thus you must not be either. Or if you are, it's something you can take care of by yourself because I don't want it anymore. And so, you know, that's how it is. So... As insane as that seems to the man, it doesn't seem insane to the woman, right? Because she's not feeling it. She thinks it's just sex. She was never thinking not for one split second. Greetings from New York, my hometown or my home state. Um, but she was never, ever, ever thinking we are getting married so that we can have sex all the time. And you know what? Frequently, the man is thinking that. He doesn't verbalize it because he thinks that that's being a jackass. And also, he thinks it goes without saying. I cannot emphasize this enough. A man who is having a very active sex life within the dating phase and within the early newlywed phase even assumes it goes without saying. 
that both of them think that this is a massive reason that they got married and that both of them are so happy about this reason that they can have sex all the time now that they're married. And I have really rarely met a woman who thinks that. Even high libido women do not posit that as a primary reason for marriage, you know? And so you really have to learn to articulate your inner world better, A, to yourself, and then to her. Once it's articulated and clear to yourself, thank you. It's got to be um, articulated to her because a lot of guys have never even really examined their inner life. That's my favorite people to work with. It's men who are smart but have never, ever been in therapy or really thought about psychology at all because then it's like they've been so smart about all these other things. When they train their intelligence on understanding themselves, the progress just skyrockets. So if you are a guy in the situation where there's been a tremendous empathic rupture about how you each, yes, that is you, Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, that like, if you've been in a situation where there's a tremendous empathic rupture about sex, it's probable. I would bet a lot of money that you have not articulated it clearly in a way that your wife can understand using language that she can understand. Empathic rupture is language that she can understand. And believe me, she has some empathic ruptures about you, but she's never thought about her decreased sexual desire and her concurrent condescension towards sex. She has never thought about that as an empathic rupture because women minimize minimizes an understatement women have no idea how much of a man's um inner world is related to sex how much of their self conception is related to being sexual and they have no no idea how much the man was assuming that they had stumbled into this heaven where now they were going to be having their honeymoon stage sex all the time in marriage. Maybe if they were part, felt particularly educated about women, they thought that they might have a little break during the six weeks after pregnancy if they happened to have a, a brother who, you know, had a baby with his wife or something. But there are no men that I have met, I don't care how smart they were. There are no men that I've met under about age 40 when they had their first marriage that understand about the libido decreasing within monogamy for women. And so you have to learn about this. Then you got to verbalize it to your wife. You could say, I know this sounds literally crazy to you, but a big reason that I wanted to marry you was I was super attracted to you. I loved our sex life and I thought that we would be doing it all the time. And I, it is just mind boggling to me, you know, the way, how far it's come, you know, it's just become so different. And now I understand that your sex drive drops off a cliff in monogamy. I still love you, but I need some understanding here. And for you not to Oh, somebody's being nasty. Yes, I speak informally, so I say you got to, but you could leave at any moment. Um, so yeah, so somebody said, right, I knew that was true, but only after we had children. It's not only once you have children. The limerent stage is a year and a half to three years. And evolutionarily, this is because that's as long as it takes for a woman to meet you, get pregnant, nurse a baby, and wean the baby. At which point, for the genetic diversity of our species to increase, she would go find another man. So that is why she, that is the evolutionary and biological reason for why the honeymoon stage only lasts 1.5 to 3 years. So anyway, so that can happen before kids. But then once kids happens, then her body feels totally different to her. It's uh, She's breastfeeding, which puts your body basically into early menopause. Yes, to increase the genetic diversity of our species, if that was the only reason for anybody to do anything, the procreative reason, she would leave and find another dude and then have more babies with another guy. That would mean that we had increased genetic diversity in our species, right? Women don't want to do that, but that doesn't mean that their body doesn't isn't wired to do that from evolutionary times. Thank you. Um, so anyhow, what you want to do is really, really verbalize this stuff to your wife. Say, I cannot even imagine how stupid this sounds to you. I'm embarrassed to say it, but I really thought that our sex life would continue maybe 
maybe a little bit less than in the dating phase, but not much. You know, we would have a little tick off, maybe some nights we would just, you know, play a board game. But most of the time, our default would be to have the crazy sex that we were having when we were dating. And the fact that you stopped wanting that after two years was a tremendous empathic rupture to me. And it's something that I'm still trying to get my sea legs around. A lot of guys have so much trouble saying this because our society makes men ashamed of their sexuality. So you think that in order to be a gentleman or a good guy, you have to deny your sex drive. So since you can't go back in time and during the dating phase, say something like, I want sex to remain important to us. And when your sex drive goes down in monogamy, I want us to work on how to, you know, still connect at least half as much as we currently are. I don't know any guys who know as much about um, evolution and who have the balls to say that in their 20s. Like, I don't even know the first, uh, forget about either one, right? Forget both. But what can you do now? Because you don't have a time machine. And I see I have a lot of people watching. So please do subscribe and follow me. If you subscribe, you can tell me what to say in these videos. But, um, and send me likes. But anyway, so what should you say to your wife now? Good. DM me or whatever young people say for a session. I definitely give sessions. I do therapy and coaching. Anyway, back to my topic. What are you going to say to your wife? You're going to say, I am embarrassed to say it. I really always start with that. That's a panty dropper to women. When you say you're wrong or that you're a stupid man, I mean, if, that could get your wife's sex drive back alone. <laughs> For you to say that you're stupid, whoa, man, she's like, or she's already blown away. But so anyway, so you say, I can't imagine how stupid this is going to sound to you, but I have been so sad, angry, and resentful that it wasn't a given to both of us that we were getting married in large part to continue our awesome sex life. And she's going to look at you like you have two heads. And that's when you say again, the panty dropper, I know how stupid. But this shows you why I am so resentful and sulky all the time, which of course I have to work on, you know, but you got to understand my perspective. My perspective is I really genuinely thought that I had struck gold, that you wanted as much as I did. I had no idea about how, you know, your libido would decrease. I don't, I don't think you did either because you're not a liar, you know? And um, $20, man, 20K. <laughs> but um, anyway, so that's what you got to say. And then when she's like, well, what do you want to do about it now? I don't have any desire now. So, you know, maybe if you did a little bit more vacuuming, then maybe I would be down to do something. Then you say, I get it. I should vacuum. No argument here about the vacuuming. However, what my main problem is, is your attitude and the condescension towards sex and that that one hurts me more than that we don't do it because that's a hundred percent correct if you introspect even briefly during me speaking you'll know that that's correct it isn't because look i say to guys all the time what if your wife had cancer would you leave her because she can't have sex with you because she has cancer and no man says yes no man However, what, when, but what if you had a wife who was having sex with you four times a week, but every time she was like, ew, all right, fine. Oh God, hurry up. Yep. Okay. Mm, uh, okay. Fine. Fine. I'll do it. Can you hurry up though? Because my show is on. Men would rather have the wife with cancer, not for nothing than the woman who says that. So you've got to say, you have got to say, I need us to go to counseling or to have a lot of discussions or whatever the case may be. You know, obviously counseling's my wheelhouse, you know, but but maybe she could just read some books about female desire. Man, we both know she's not gonna do that. So try to get the counseling. So at least that somebody's speaking to her directly. And you say, it's the attitude. Yes, those are my diplomas. Thank you. Columbia, University of Maryland. Um, but you, you say the attitude is what is really the empathic rupture. I thought it went without saying that we both loved sex and then it was a slap in the face that we did it. And that may seem ludicrous to you, but it's my reality. And that level of resentment has been hard for me to get over despite me knowing that it's bad for our relationship, for us as a family, everything. And when women hear you say that you were wrong and that you want to look at how you were wrong and how you thought about it, 
they may come more to the table to examine what they're wrong about. And what they're wrong about is the dismissive attitude. From their perspective, going from the honeymoon stage to regular is like being drunk and then being sober. They were like drunk in the honeymoon stage. They were drunk on new love and sexual desire. And then when they come out of that, it's like they can barely remember it. They are literally, and many men say this, like a different person. So you are going to have to really mobilize your articulation skills, your oratorical power here to say, we need to work on this because I, it is a massive empathic rupture on my end and I do not want the resentment to grow anymore. And I'm sure you got a lot to tell a counselor that I have to work on, but this is what I feel on my side that you have to work on. And very uh, more women will respond to that than you think because why get married if that happens many reasons first of all not it, while well I'll, I'll just i'll just keep talking for the hell of it cuz i have this nice person who's being uh, asking a lot of questions humble bulk um so the the point is here why would you get married if this happens multiple reasons People like love. People are pair bonding animals. You fall in love with somebody, you like all the same TV shows, you laugh at the same things, you want to have babies, or it's your second marriage and you just get along like, you know, like a house on fire. Yes, a woman's libido goes down, but A, everybody, every woman is not the same. There is the bell curve. And all women's libido does not drop as precipitously. I've written extensively and spoken extensively about signs that your that your wife will stop liking sex after marriage, including squeamishness, squeamishness, disgust, dislike of physical touch. However, that means on the other side, if you find somebody who loves physical touch and isn't squeamish and is open-minded, it is likely that her sex drive will drop much less precipitously. And uh, she, as I said before, what you really also want is somebody open-minded who still understands that you value sex and who tries to get herself in the mood, understands responsive desire, and doesn't just say, if I don't have spontaneous desire, then I should just go back because she's n never going to have spontaneous desire if she's a low libido woman in monogamy. Never ever, 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 ever. And if she thinks she is, then that is the root of your problem. So that's why she needs to have some education. And you need to have some education because what, you're going to tell her to watch my podcast? You see how bad that goes for a lot of men? They're like, I'm not listening to that fucking thing. Okay, cool. So that means that you have to say things like, hey, you know what? I learned that you are right. That's music to a woman's ears too. Music to a woman's ears. You are right. You don't want sex. And that's totally normal for women in monogamy. You never are going to actually want sex. What you might do is want sex once we start to have sex. Because that's called responsive desire. There's a book, Come As You Are, which you can read that talks about this stuff more. Or you can read my posts and podcasts are much easier than a book. Um, quicker. But the the point is, she's never going to have spontaneous desire again because those times are done. A low libido woman in monogamy, that's over. But what she could have is, is responsive desire, which means if she puts herself into the situation, she will feel a responding, a uh, increase in libido. Just from starting to have sex, she may want to have sex. But Today's popular culture tells women that if you even try to have sex when you don't want to, then, you know, femininity, not femininity, <laughs> the opposite, um, you know, then, then the patriarchy wins, you know, which is some bullshit because that's just not how women work biologically. Biologically, women have responsive desire. They got to start to kiss, to touch something, and then they could feel their desire mount. And men and women outside of monogamy and younger women have spontaneous desire, meaning feeling horny colloquially, right? Wanting it and then doing it. So here's how it works. Spontaneous desire happens first and then sex, right? Sex happens first and then responsive desire. It's totally inverted. So if you and your wife are thinking that you're wired the same or you're expecting, this is like the best one men, when men are like, oh, you know that like, she, I, I'm not, I can't grab her. I can't just grab her boob. Isn't that some garbage? I should be able to grab her boob. What are you talking about? She doesn't experience any desire during the day. It's like if she came over and ripped at your nose, you'd be like, get the fuck away from me, right? So <laughs> so the, the point is, you're welcome. Thank you for following. Um, 
please subscribe. But anyway, it hurts because she doesn't experience anything like desire. Whereas if your wife came over and grabbed you, it would be your birthday and Christmas all rolled into one. It's legitimately the opposite for a woman. So to, you got to understand the difference between male and female biology. I discuss this a lot on my podcast, The Dr. Psych Mom Show. Thank you for the likes. Um, I discuss this a lot on my podcast, and the the reality of it is men and women could not be more different sexually. So when men try to extrapolate by like what they like or what they respond to and then assume that they're going to do some of that and their wife is going to respond, all they do is end up feeling worse, more frustrated, more alone, more like their marriage is a garbage fire because they're barking up exactly the wrong tree. Thank you. I aim to be eye-opening. Um, so another one, since y'all are liking these disparity examples, is about the working out thing. Men are like, well, she must be into somebody. She must want sex from somebody because she works out. And you know what else she does? She goes and gets a blowout for her hair and she puts on makeup Who's she trying to look attractive for? It must be somebody because I know myself. I go to the gym. I think I look hot. I think that I'm going to increase the rate of the likelihood of my wife or maybe somebody else finding me attractive. Women are totally different. The majority of the women in my remote age range that are going to the gym are thinking the following things. This is really good for my mental health. I read it online. This is totally going to stop my seasonal depression. Totally. And it, it it's such a good role model for the kids because my mom was never active. And so if my kids see me going to Zumba, they're totally going to develop healthy lifestyles. Yes, and women dress for women too. That is a point with other types of women, more narcissistic. But um, anyway, the, the point is this. Women and men are wired beyond different in terms of, oh, oh, and the best one is, this is my favorite example. Men do not understand that a woman can find a man attractive without wanting to sleep with him. When this is like a thousand, one million percent true. <laughs> so like I told you women don't experience uh, spontaneous desire within monogamy. It's basically turned off for everybody, including Chris Hemsworth or whoever y'all use as like an example. Literally. She'll be like, oh, that guy's cute. Yeah, he's totally, he's totally cute. He's totally hot. Oh, ha, ha, he's so cute. Oh my God, I would do that. Do you know what her vagina feels while she talks like that? Nothing. Her vagina feels nothing. She feels no frisson of excitement at all. She's literally just saying, that's a cute guy. Literally. Just like she'd be like, oh my God, that woman is so hot. Oh my God, I would die to have those boobs. I would die to have those legs. I think I'm going to get myself a mommy makeover. Literally, it's like the same level of desire. Whereas to a man trying to explain that you find somebody of the opposite sex attractive without wanting to have sex with them is like trying to like explain to them how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. It's like completely theoretical. It's completely theoretical, right? And so, yes, men do not even understand what that means. Like a hot woman and I don't want to have sex with her. Wait, hold on. Wait, a hot woman and I don't. They can't even understand it. And it's so different for women. I just got a, a good question. To initiate with your wife instead of groping and stuff, you could just stop there with the question. I mean, I'll continue, but never initiate in that way. Ever, never grope and stuff. Never, ever, ever ever, never. Uh, she probably didn't even like it that much during the honeymoon stage, but basically anything you did was cute in the honeymoon stage, so she rolled with it. Um, yeah, listen, the, the people that come in to be like, oh, guess what? There's some men that think different than what you're saying and some women that think different than what you're saying. Cool. I understand. What I'm talking about is the majority of people that I see, which can be very useful in order to convey anything. You really got to generalize sometimes. Otherwise, you get caught up in the in the trees and not the forest. But yes, if anything I'm saying doesn't apply to you, feel free to disregard it. This is a free country. So to initiate with your wife instead of groping, never grope, good, good start, should you just wait until nighttime? Now let me tell you another fun fact. Women's testosterone, which women also need in order to have a sex drive, not just men need testosterone. Men have a shitload more of testosterone, but women still do have it. Um, it, it peaks at 6 a.m. So when should you really try to initiate sex? It's at its lowest at 6 p.m. And then after that, her natural tiredness kicks in and she does, I, very, very few want it, women want it at night within monogamy after about age, I don't know, 35. So 
When should you really do it? Well, there's this wonderful thing now that happened to the world, uh, lemonade out of a lemon, uh, called telecommuting. And about uh, 1,000%, and that's a mathematical term, of women that I speak to say that their favorite time to do it is in the afternoon. So if you can move heaven and earth or really just not schedule a conference call in the afternoon, whoopsie, I've been talking so long that this went away. Um, let me try to get on my light, my light, my light. Um, but anyway, so most women are going to want it, I'm back, in the afternoon. And second to that, they might want it in the morning. Wet, yes, afternoon delight. Very good. So um, definitely try that. Uh, like Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel. But, the, the, but not, we hope not, because didn't she have another man there when he came back to bed? But a lot of women will say, I can't do it in the morning because I have to get up with the kids and blah, 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 and you don't pack the lunches. Well, oh, oh, one way to fix that. Do the fucking lunches. Do all this shit in the morning. What do you care? The men that I have seen transform their sex life have a massive paradigm shift. Basically, it is this. It is this. My most important, that I'm speaking as a man now, you know, my most important thing in this marriage is sex by a wide margin. So what I'm going to do is basically anything that makes it more likely that I have sex. And I'm going to stay on brand too, because if I vacillate much as that would seem at work, it seems like I'm wishy-washy and don't know what the fuck I want. So instead, what I'm going to do with my wife is I'm going to stay on brand and on task and I'm going to make everything easy for her as long as she tries to have an interesting, let's not go very far afield, an enthusiastic sex life with me. And if women really pick up on that, that you are really willing to put your money where your mouth is, and you're not going to be like sulky or annoying about basically any other thing as long as you are having a good sex life because that's your number one thing. And if you're about to say, why do I have to give up all my other things that I want out of a marriage? Well, then A, you're probably already a difficult person. B, I would say the same thing to the women. Stick with one big ask at a time. If a woman wants her husband to be a more engaged father, don't also be like, you know what else would be nicer if you were more romantic? And you know what else would be nicer if you could like build us a shed? Because I always like to shed and my dad can build sheds. Why can't you build sheds? And also, no, you stay on task with your big ask. If your big ask is for the person to like be a more engaged uh, sexual partner or a more engaged parent or whatever the hell you want, have that be your big ask. Don't make, don't throw a million things onto the pile. So if you make this your big thing and you make it your life, work to understand female biology, male biology, monogamy, and its impact on libido, aging, and all of these different things, how could all that work go to naught? It really doesn't. You know, hard work pays off. That That's the truth of the matter. And a lot of guys who are like, I've done all this research, and I say, how much of it did you share with your wife? They say approximately zero. I tried to email uh, your podcast to her, and she wouldn't listen. Well, then um, none of the information was conveyed. So then how do you expect something to change? You have to be willing to have some confrontation got to be willing to break some eggs in order to make an omelet right so um i can't really talk much more at this frenetic pace but i am so glad that everybody liked this and thank you so much for listening i'm actually going to do a podcast about this topic of empathic ruptures and intimacy please do subscribe and um you know please do follow me everywhere especially here please do follow me and thanks so much guys have a great sunday